welcome everyone uh, this is uh, welcome to this webinar and uh, we are uh, punjabi chamber of commerce and this is a, a movement for punjabis all over the world and here is the qr code to know more about the organization and i am the co-chair for san francisco chapter in the bay area with kulwant uh, sandhu who is also our uh, co-chair and uh, so we'll we'll i'll tell you a little bit about myself uh, first uh, so that you know who I am. So I, I run a marketing company where we are helping uh, SMB small and medium businesses build their online presence, grow and scale their businesses. And I also I am the founder or CEO of uh, an advisory and merger and acquisitions company where we are helping. Uh, we are actually investing more than just money in this company uh, with, with, uh, in, our, in our target companies, in our uh, advising and we we believe that with our advisors, uh, we are we bring the missing piece to the puzzle and help connect the dots for many of the challenges many of the business owners have. Now, uh, I have, I, like I said, I'm the co-chair of the Punjabi Chamber of Commerce of our San Francisco chapter and uh, with Kulwant. And here is a little more about Punjabi Chamber of Commerce. And uh, we are a nonprofit organization funded with the support of uh, generous support of many many Punjabis across the world, and it started. It started in uh, New York and New Jersey area in 2017, and it, the main focus is to connect Punjabi business owners and professionals across the world and help the community as uh, as we grow. And this is a no religion, no politics policy in place for every of our chapter. We do not discuss politics. We do not discuss any religion. This We are not associated with anything like that. And like I said, our main focus is to help entrepreneurs grow their businesses, professionals to lead their businesses and help grow their life in their lives. And also uh, and ensure that community leaders expand their reach. And uh, like our, our, our members come from varied backgrounds from... Uh, from business owners, like you know, Punjabis own many, many types of businesses, and they have many, they own many startups, they are the leaders in the many companies, and they all are located in many countries in the world. And this uh, chamber is in USA, Canada, UK, and India, and even in Australia and other places. So let's let's see what we did. So signing up is super easy and free. You can click on this or uh, pick take a picture of this QR code, it will take you to the uh, membership play, page as this free and then I wanted to also share with you what we did from uh, when India was going through the uh, second or third wave of uh, of uh, COVID we they were struggling for oxygen at that time and our organization provided around hundred thousand dollars and distributed around 100 oxygen concentrators in hospitals and Punjab. And we also are right now are with the help of within in, in collaboration within partnership with Rotary uh, International uh, generating uh, or taking funds for uh, oxygen plants and other things uh, in, 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 in Punjab. And we have like we have a youth wing. We want uh, our youth to start this uh, join this movement as young because the moment they start young, they will feel part of the community. And our our mm. established, accomplished uh, uh, leaders will also be able to mentor them into their careers, or if they want to do startups or businesses, our mentors uh, in all centers should be able to help them. Okay. And the today's webinar is little known profit building strategies that can exponentially grow your business and revenue. And I have, uh, when we were thinking about this, I, I, the one name which came into my mind is Mike Patterson, who's a very, very dear friend of mine. And he's a coach. He has done exceptionally well in the last few decades. And, and I requested him to, uh, to, to share this forum with me so that we can help Punjabis across the world and uh, Punjabi business owners increase their businesses. Okay. So Mike, would you like to say something about uh, yourself and introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Mike. I'm originally from UK. I've got various letters after my, me, my name, so don't worry about it. 
I'm a business consultant coach. I've been doing that, helping businesses for over 15 years. I'm a corporate trainer, more than 20 years on 30 different subjects. I'm an award-winning speaker, author, influencer. So far, I've worked with over 50,000 individuals and companies in 40 different industries. I'm known as a corporate strategy and business growth expert. So I help businesses 2x to 32x their revenues and profits. Awesome. Right? Awesome. Yeah, 2x to 32x, I think it'll be a great, and we would like to get some, some, some unique strategies from you uh, today so that uh, you know, we can also see the growth here. So the, uh, the, I think the foundational, let's talk about, I think ask uh, Mike about the foundational understanding which is required for little known profit building strategies rather than just going into strategies. Is that uh, right, Mike? Yeah, absolutely. Most people or most businesses seem to use just, well, first of all, they don't use strategies. They are tactical. Okay. And tactical is very short term. And what we're going to look at now is what most companies talk about is what they do. Okay. And it, if you go through this, whenever a company or a person says, what do they say, Sandeep? Oh, what? we do this or we, we do, do this or we do that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and yeah, go yeah, ahead. But, uh, my mind always asks, so, so what? Whenever you write something, at the end of each sentence, imagine someone's reading it and saying, so what? What does that mean to me? What yeah. does any of what you're writing to do with me? Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying every company, not only the person who is like uh, talking about elevator pitch or anything, every company should have their own um, uh, elevator pitch or whenever they're even talking about the company, they should know. Uh, we do this or that, but we are talking about what does it to for what does any of this have to do with me, which is a customer, right? This is what you're saying, right? Uh, click the next line, right? Okay. Because people are saying, how do I benefit? People don't care about you, Sandy. Although you're a very nice guy, people don't care about me. Yeah, they care about themselves. W I I F M. What's in it for me? Yeah. So if, if a company says, we've been in business for 20 years, okay, so what? What that means is that the company probably has stability because only one company out of 100 makes it past the 10-year mark. And because they have been there for 20 years, they must be doing something right. So they're probably reliable. But they just make the statement, we've been here for 20 years. And the answer to that is, so what? Yeah. Right. We, we have to lead people. Yeah, I agree. Right? I agree. And they, they say, we do this. We supply product X and product Y and service X and service Y. Right? Yeah. That's no, okay. You can go to the next slide. Yeah. But people I, I do not buy. People do not buy product buy and services. services. Okay. Correct. That's what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. And they, they buy solution and results. Right, and they buy, um, they're actually buying a feeling, okay. right? Because at okay. the end of the day, what psychologist says is people want to feel good, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. they buy for one of two reasons, to move towards or move away from what? Anybody? Right, <laughs> right. Move, move towards, towards pleasure or pleasure. move away from? From pain. Pain. Right. So, the, so you're saying there are only two reasons why people buy stuff, whether no matter what it, what they buy it from, whether it is a business to business deals or 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 business to customer. B to B or B to C. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, either moving towards pleasure or moving away from pain. Right. Have yeah. you heard the story of the man who goes to visit his friend, mm -hmm. and they're sitting on the veranda drinking something nice and cool. And at his feet is a friend's dog. And the dog's groaning, you know. Oh, oh. He says to his friends, you know, well, what's wrong with the dog? He says, well, he's 
lying on a nail. Obvious question, why doesn't he move? Well, it's not hurting enough. Mm -hmm. And our clients are exactly the same. If it's not hurting enough, they're not going to take action. If the pain is not hurting enough, they're just going to accept it and, and just keep on doing what they're doing. Awesome. And so what do you think is the more motivational, uh, pain or uh, pleasure? Or pleasure. Well, most people I ask actually say pleasure is the more motivational. Uh-huh. But okay. But I, what psychologists say is pain is two and a half times more motivational. People will expend a certain amount of energy to gain something new, but they'll fight to keep what they've already got. Yeah. So pain is a big motivator. We need to point out this is the pain you have, and I can fix your pain. And that is that is the foundation you are saying for the uh, for the profit uh, building strategies. Because unless we understand that uh, that portion of it, that foundation of what customers' pain is, we uh, we cannot build on those strategies. And uh, okay, so I think uh, the four rules of pain and pleasure. Uh, uh, According your, you know, you talked about pain. Would you like to talk about this or uh, the rules? Like all decisions are made by our uh, two, like you said about uh, to avoid the pain or gain or pleasure. People will do much more to avoid pain. You have already covered that they will be to gain the pleasure. And the third point is perception is reality. So what do you want to say about this? Because uh, sometimes the pain is more important or the perception of the pain is more important? It's perception and your perception may deviate from what my perception is. So what my perception of your problem doesn't really matter. I have to know what you are experiencing. It's like empathy. So Ideally, I need to find out the questions you are asking to find out what your pain is. So then I can start answering those questions. Okay. Right? And All until right. I understand your pain, I can't really talk to you. And okay. most people are shotgunning, the spraying the message to everybody, but everybody is not their market. Sorry, I was trying to share. Everybody is not them. Okay, you're you're sharing an echo, echo, echo. I I shared the link with you uh, for the Facebook. I think we are face. Hmm. We're live on Facebook. Maybe you can uh, share that uh, uh, with the others. And uh, I Um, I think I shared it with you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. And Mike can share it. I can share it with my group. And so it is the perception you are saying is more important than actual pain. And then what the fourth fourth one is, let me move this a little bit. Pain and are modulated by time. You know, I have always thought and I have always looked at how instant gratification is sought by people. And what do you have to say? In many companies, I see the product and services and the those services have maybe eight to 10 steps and they, when the customer has to uh, go through many hoops to actually solve their problems. Do you think that's, uh, what, 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 what do you have to say here? Well, if you listen to Jay Abraham, that's one of the things he says, make things easy for people. And I'm a big proponent of what I call, what's called the KISS principle, keep it short and simple. If you're in business, make it easy for the customer, A, to reach you, and B, make it easy for him to buy. If you make it complicated, people now have an eight-second attention span. A goldfish has a nine-second attention span, right? So the average person's got an attention span less than a goldfish, right? I find really horrifying. So yeah. if, if you make buying from you complicated, people are probably just going to give up. Yeah. They're, they're just going to go somewhere where it's easier. Yeah. 
I, I agree. And that, that's the foundation of strategy. So let's talk about some of the profit building strategies. And the first one, which uh, I think I see here is the value stacking. Would you like to say something about that, Mike? I, well, I'm talking enough. How about you talk about value stacking? Oh, I, value <laughs> stacking. I don't know. You, you okay, talk more okay. than I well, yeah. that value stacking is is where you see a lot on digital marketing where they say you get this bonus and this bonus and this bonus and this bonus and you put a price or cost of that bonus. So at the end of it, you say, well, what you're getting is worth $20,000, but I'm only charging you two. Yeah. Right. And that's a value stacking. You're saying that the value provided with those services and the bonus is, is uh, perceived value is around 20,000 and they are charging around 2,000. And that's how most of the that, coaches... That, that, that's how value stacking works. Yeah. Uh, in, the, in the online marketing, I see so many things happening these days in the same way what you explained. But in the in the business to business uh, world also, or the B two C world also, uh, most of the business owners uh, will also can also do similar value stacking and 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 actually quantify that stacking and show this is of value of this much, but we are giving you a discount and uh, and giving this thing, or maybe add a bonus or a or a free product which is of value which can add uh, to this and then charge more money correct i'm i'm actually against giving people discounts to a certain degree mm -hmm. because people expect it so you can say you can give a concession which is slightly different mm -hmm. but whenever whenever someone asks for a discount you never give a discount without getting something in return yeah like yes i can give you a discount if you buy today or if you buy, you know, three months worth or something. Okay. Yeah. So and it's like, if, yeah. if you look at the difference between value and cost or value and price, value is what we get. Cost is what we pay for it. Yeah. So if people see the value of something and it is more than the perceived cost, so it's the perceived value against the cost or the price of buying it. Price is never going to be an issue. I, I agree. And I think uh, you once mentioned to me that uh, uh, this beautiful philosophy of uh, even in online marketing, this goes that for every $10 you gave me, I gave you $12 in return. How many of $10 would you give me? Uh, as, as many as I could get, I would go to the bank and take a loan. I yeah. get out my credit card because I'm making a 20% return for every $10 I give you. You give me 12 back. So in, in other words, you're saying price is never an issue if, we, if you value stack it enough. And then by, by pricing is right, we are able to charge more money and then get more uh, more uh, well it's, it's not about right charging money. More, more money as such and okay. talking about this if i said for every ten dollars you gave me i'm going to give you nine back you got a problem yeah yeah of course so when people are saying you know could we do something with the price but what they're actually saying is you're not showing me the value of of equal to what to the price you're asking mm -hmm. i agree i agree and 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 then another thing which is a risk reversal i see all the time people at least in in educational industry or in the coaching or in the online courses or many of these products which can be returned online risk reversal right that even amazon many products are uh, uh, are with this philosophy that you can return any time, you know, even if it hits. Uh, so, so what do you say about that? How important is that? Well, people don't buy because of perceived risk. So if you can, especially with someone who's new in the market. So if you can take away that perceived risk and say, look, doing business with me, it has no risk. 
people are giving 100%, 200% return, mm -hmm. right? If my product doesn't do what it says, I will give you double, maybe not money, but I will give you double credit or something. Yeah. So that I can spend $100, and if I don't like it, I get $200 worth of value back. Where's the risk? Yeah, I definitely, definitely. Right? Yeah. So what I've said here is make it so that your clients come out so far ahead dealing with you that they'd be stupid not to do business with you. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think this is a risk reversal is that final step in the game where, uh, like you said, perceived risk. And if we take care of that perceived risk, the chances of the order materializes or the customer becoming a lifelong customer or even an ambassador in the future for us is, is high. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and make your offers irresistible. And that's another topic in itself, you know, how to make an offer irresistible. Here, I think we're, you're just saying um, this, we have to make it. How we make it, we can cover up maybe next time when you get time. Okay, what I, I really mean with this is that I get a lot of offers. We all get offers in emails and stuff which are easily resistible. It yeah. takes no effort on my part to say, no, nah, not interested. Yeah. So you should look at whatever you're putting out and make it irresistible. So people look at it and are reaching for their credit card. Mm -hmm. Right? If yeah. they're not doing that, then your offer is resistible and we need it to be irresistible not resistible i agree and uh, so we talk about profit building strategies two which is own the niche and why do you think that is important and uh, maybe what's uh, would you like to say something more about what's your niche and all that so do do you know what your niche is okay. i mean there's so many different I'll, I'll say niches out there. What is your ideal? And who is your ideal market? Yeah. I think we need to identify first what an ideal client or customer is. An ideal client or customer has the problem you solve, is motivated to have it solved, and can afford your price can afford your price. If, That's right. And if it's not those three things, they are not your client. Yeah. They're not a potential client. Can I help? You know, I can help people who work in stores. Can I help them? Yes, of course I can. Can they pay me? Uh, no, I'm sorry. N they're not my market. Yeah. So right. understanding the who's your market and what's your niche is important. And I think uh, when you say niche, you're talking about not the existing niche also. You can even you know be creative here and create your own niche within the market from your services and from your offers and from your uh, products. Am I correct? Yeah, the challenge we've got at the moment, everyone is trying to make us into a commodity. A commodity is a liter of milk, a, a kilo of rice, a pound of potatoes. And that is always comes down to price. Mm -hmm. So the market is trying to beat us down to be a commodity. And you need to step away and say, I'm not a commodity. What I offer is something totally unique in the market. And most people aren't doing that either. You look at their website, there is no USP differentiation. Yeah. They're not yeah. saying, this mm -hmm. is why you should work with me. Yeah. They're saying, we, we give great service and we do this. There's nobody out there going to say, I think you should do business with me because we are really terrible at service. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> So let's let's look look forward and uh, start seeking the valuable lesson in everything you do, hear, experience, and see. No matter what your business is, think about this every day. And this line which you wrote is fantastic. How can I personally make my clients' lives better? So we are not talking about just 
uh, just selling the products, we are actually, like you said, uh, the perception and, and actually emotion and, and ensuring that the client's life is better and what transformation that client is getting from what it is right now and what it he want he or she wanted to be and how you have actually helping them to achieve that transformation. Am I am I understanding this correctly? Correct. Correct. So the emphasis is on how can I, me personally, make every single day I go out, I want to make a difference in someone's life. I believe my purpose in life is to make a positive difference with other people. Yeah. So I try, I strive to do that every single day. A lot of businesses, when I talk to them, say, well, why are you in business? The first thing they come up with is to make money. I said, that is not the purpose of a business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Oh, and I think yeah. we talk about it a little bit, a couple of sides down. Okay. But yet we should be looking at it is what can I do every single day to make my lives better? Every time they interact with me, they come away better than they were before better they interacted with us. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think I think let's go for the strategy number three right now. And because we are watching the time also, uh, ask who else do does business with my ideal client. And that's that in a, in a sense, I think you are saying is we, we need to look at the journey of our client, what he buys before during or after he he gets uh, in touch with us right so that we know what and then then figure out the, is that what you're saying or something else is in your yeah mind? no that's right so okay. yeah we start finding out ways to deal with everybody so if you take someone like a high-end jeweler mm -hmm. the jewelry is really expensive so the people who buy that probably buy sports cars they probably yeah take expensive vacations, stay in expensive hotels, buy expensive clothes, hats, shoes, yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. So if you look at those people, almost none of these would share their database with each other. Yeah. But I, they, I they have people who are selling basically to the same market you are. And if we, like you said, database, and you, uh, and in other words, I would say the customer list, their customer list is so underutilized asset of any company. Like we, uh, you and I are uh, also uh, uh, teaming up to even uh, for doing some acquisitions. And we are also talking about acquisitions when we're talking about customer list as one of the most important assets somebody will have. And, and that asset, is so underutilized in many businesses we see they are not even leveraging it or uh, so so if you have if you know who is where your customer is buying before during or after and get hold of those customer lists or maybe get hold of those joint ventures i think uh, it can be a great uh, profit generation uh, for every of our business uh, am, am i correct in my understanding or do you want to say something else here yeah as you said, most of these people look at them as we look at them as a comp competition as opposed to uh, a companion. So, yeah. how can we utilize? We can endorse their products, they can endorse our products. Yeah. If you listen to people who are successful in internet marketing, they say the money's in the list. Every name on your list is worth $1 a month. I remember now what you said is so so well and it happened to me i bought a new car a few days back uh, last month and i first time in my life i got a a free offer after 15 days or say hey I, you must be enjoying your car here's a free offer free offer was getting a expensive family portrait from a very high end photographer photographic uh, studio or something and, and and family portrait or something and the picture and the website looked like like it's like uh, used by some uh, billionaires or somebody and i said you know what it's a straight because they know somebody who has bought this car may be the right candidate for selling future so why don't we where why don't we uh, take picture or family picture for one and give them free and then maybe make them our customers. So I think this is a great example. Am I correct? Free, free, free works. You know, when McDonald's first came out with uh, coffee, uh -huh. right? A, they hired away one of the CEOs from Starbucks. 
Mm -hmm. They started, I think, in the US between, say, 7 and 8 a.m. They would say, come into McDonald's for a free coffee. <laughs> yeah. What they found was uh -huh. that for every free coffee, people went in and bought breakfast. So for every free coffee they gave away, I they agree. made $15 profit. I agree. I agree. That's a, that's a great. And I think that's why, and just to digress and give one more example, there's another company called Panera Bread and others. Panera Bread is giving us, I think I saw an advertisement say $9 a month unlimited coffee you can have in their in their in their store nine dollars a month unlimited coffee in their store and, and and it's a great store you know and many many places wow. so anyway so and and you know because anybody who spends nine dollars for a month he's going to go and fill up his cup most of the time <laughs> end up buying other stuff from them but do, do, do you know what starbucks cost is for a cup of coffee i uh, know i don't know it's seven cents Wow, and I, I, you, you, I, you'd have to drink a lot of coffee to go through nine dollars in a month, though. So <laughs> seven cents, yeah, so from yeah. a fast perspective, yes. So I think the the essence, the the message here, what you are trying to say is the JV and the partnerships are the fastest way to growth and the build the profits, right? Yeah, because these people we're talking about who sell not competitive products have already been in business, so. Yeah utilize their expertise, utilize their lists, yeah. right? Yeah. So uh, let's move on to the next one, pricing. We, we talked about value stacking before, but this is different because we are talking about pricing in a different altogether. And then I see many, many businesses have not looked at their prices for many years. And sometimes they set the price looking at the you know, uh, looking at the average market price or listing around this around the same price, and you know, just look around and say put the same price so that uh, they don't go um, different. So, would you like to say something more about that? And I see some uh, acronyms here. Uh, would you like to talk something about that? One thing I've just remembered, I've just posted on Facebook. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, entrepreneurs, we have to. I say we have to work backwards. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So studies show that 80% of products are wrongly priced. Where a company is selling, say, 20, 50 different products, what they'll do, they will take their fixed costs and divide it by the number of products that they're selling. And that's about it. So what you need to look at is not what your price point is. <clears throat> but is how much profit do you make on each sale? And this CAC, customer acquisition costs. If you're doing marketing, how much is a new customer costing you? Uh, acquisition. DL is customer yeah. lifetime. Mm -hmm. How long does the average customer stay with you? And CLV or marginal net worth is how much do they spend in that time? Yeah, I because agree. whatever your CLV is, what the expert says, your marketing is about 30% of that. And I, and I see now, I see many, many businesses are even acquiring, since they know that the actual customer lifetime value is much higher and they are willing to even give free the first month or, the, or even, even give the first two months free just to ensure because they know that the customer will stick with the product and the value and pay more in the total customer life cycle value and the acquisition they absorb and they also give a couple of months free. I mean, this is what you're saying, right? That's one of them. Um, if any of you on the call have salespeople and they make a sale, what commission do you give them? Because mm -hmm. if you know the lifetime value of the customer, let's say you sell a product that gives you a $200 commission or a $200 profit on your first sale, and you're giving the salesman 10%, $20, how motivated is he to go out and get new customers? Not very. Yeah. But if you know that the average customer is going to spend at least $3,000 with you, why not give the salesman the whole 
profit from the first sale. Yeah. yeah. So for every new customer he goes out, he's going to make two hundred dollars. Yeah. He's going to be an animal out there, right? <laughs> yeah, for, for twenty dollars, he's probably not even going to bother, you know, yeah. getting off his seat. I agree. And so if not, then you're saying that most of the businesses are not, and they're wrongly priced, right? Let's move on to the next one. And that's a, that's the beauty, you know? And then we're saying, understand your and others hourly rate. And I have been talking about a lot with people about how, what, whether you are spending your time on $10 of work, $100 of work, or $5 of work, or $1,000 of work. But your take on this is entirely, entirely different and better uh, than I, what I have been saying. And I, I would like to listen. It's not, to it's not to necessarily better. It's just a, a different way of putting it. Okay. So if you look at this, what you suggested earlier is anybody who's watching, just take a quick screenshot of this. Yes. But I'll go through it anyway. Yeah. So let's say your income goal is to make 100000 in mm -hmm. a year. You're going to work 20 hours a week, 50 weeks a year. That's a thousand hours. So you divide your hourly rate by your number of hours. Your hourly rate is a hundred an hour. Yeah. So taking the kids to school or picking up from school, doing the washing, picking up the dry cleaning, doing the grocery shopping, it's not a hundred an hour job. Yeah. So I if agree. during these 20 hours a week, 50 weeks a year, you do hundred per hour work, you make your hundred K. And if you don't, you won't. It's that simple. And 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 I think we we what we are encouraging people is that this is a very and this is a topic in itself. And I, I would request for your time in the future to go into deep into it. That's but what we are saying is in every business, there are so many five dollar or ten dollars or twenty dollar job, not only kids uh, dropping kids and all that. But also within the business, there are many jobs which could have been done by somebody else. And, and, and I see many business owners, many entrepreneurs spending 100% of the juices of their day doing that day-to-day -day kind of work, which is only giving them $10 a job, but rather than working on something which their actual value is. Okay. Yeah, they, the entrepreneurs seem to think they're saving money by doing everything. But when you use this principle, actually the losing money, hand over fist. Yeah, I agree. They should, they should be outsourcing those things to somebody of a high, lower hourly rate. Yeah. So the sixth and the uh, strategy is power, Parthenon. Pa uh, Parthenon, like the Parthenon, Parthenon. in yeah. Greece. Thank you very right. much. It's been there for thousands yeah. of years. There you are. There's I, the Parthenon. I, I practice. I practice this word, but I couldn't speak properly. So you, you can you please go uh, further on this before I... Uh, right, <laughs> most, if you, if you yeah. look at this, most industries or most businesses have one revenue act generating activity. And here I'm saying direct sales. So they rely on just one revenue activity or approach to grow their business. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So this... Uh, Jay Ram calls it diving board philosophy. Yeah. If you go to the next slide, I liken it to a table with one leg. Yeah, yeah. I right. I, I see this is, picture. Is that a safe thing to eat off? Yeah, I think this picture is <clears throat> very, very important. And this picture tells how many businesses actually collapse just because they depend on only one revenue generation activity. Correct. So. so Right? Uh, yes. What happens when that one approach becomes less effective? Yeah. When COVID hit, yeah. the market many... collapsed and so many, com so many companies went yeah. under because of that, just that one thing, one revenue stream. That's it. Yeah. So with only one stream, what happens if you want to increase your growth by 20%, you're going to need 20% more effort, 20% more staff, 20% more money, and 20% more advertising which is right, it is just a way of saying it can be even more than that. You're just saying 20% growth is for maybe you need to put 50% more effort, but this is probably we need to get at least this much of an effort, right? But the Absolutely. point, but here is just a 20% increase in revenue will 
Okay, with one, right? one. So it, here. it, it yeah. doesn't matter. But what I'm saying here is, if you look at it, just a 20% gradual increase in revenue, consistent, it will double your revenue in 3.6 years. 4x at 7.2, 8x at 10.8, 16x in 14.4 years, 32x in 18 years. If yeah. you're going to be in business for the next 20 years, why not make 32 times more money than you are now? Yeah, definitely. And, and that's a possibility only if we move on and add more revenue generating activities. Correct? That's what you're saying. Correct. So this, now this table looks a lot more solid than the one-legged version that we showed you before. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. So and, go ahead. Okay. So click, click. Is it? So with there's, revenue, there's, a, revenue slide, there's a slide missing, but never mind. Okay. The, the, the slide shows 10 different revenue streams or 10 different revenue activities. Mm -hmm. And if each of those activities has two different revenue streams, you're only going to need a 1% increase on each revenue stream to get your 20% growth. Yeah. So, so what, is, what would be easier? Uh, yeah. What is like easier? this one revenue stream, 20%, yeah. or have mm -hmm. 10 each with two streams and, and increase think, each one 1%. And I think it is more predictable and sustainable also, like you're saying, to have multiple or 10 legged table or 10 revenue streams rather than 10, having 20, 30, yeah. because yeah. then you're basically economy proof because it doesn't matter what the economy does. You have got so you've got money coming in or revenue coming in from so many different avenues that if one collapses, it doesn't matter because you've got yeah, you've got 30 streams each with two, you've got 60 revenue streams. Yeah, and if I, one collapses, so what? It yeah. doesn't matter. I, and I agree. And I think with what you're saying is with COVID, I have, we have seen 50% of the businesses in the United States and across the world were impacted. And we saw how, how the world is changing. Like I, like I help uh, small and medium businesses across all the time. And we see their online presence is needed. It was needed before also. But right now, if you see that this is even needed because uh, uh, because most of the businesses have are on, online and the customers have moved online. So if you are not online and if you're not changing with the flow, with the with the changes in the market and the world, there is nothing. Th th this is this is this is going to be worse. So would you like to right. say something about world is changing and has changed worse well, than it's today? Not, it's not, if you notice, I've crossed. I put a line through. It's changing. It's yeah. changed. I talk to business people and they say, well, I hope things are going to get better. I went, oh, really? That's your plan? You hope things are going to get better? Yeah. Right? It, Click. Yeah, I agree. It right? is not hope. Assume today yeah. is the best things are going to be for the next five years, and tomorrow it's going to be worse than today. Okay. So what With now? With that in mind, what are you going to do now? What worked a few years ago is not longer working, and that's true. And I, I see that every day here. With that in mind, what's your plan to move forward? Or even, you know, do you have one? Do you have a plan? Or like you said, are you just hoping? Like we always say, hope marketing and hope marketing to yourself is the worst thing anybody can do. You know, you wake up every day morning hoping that today will be a different thing. If without plan and nothing happens, so you you you're asking for, uh, do you have any 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 anyone? So I, I since we are short of time, uh, Anshu, do you have anybody any questions or anything here? Uh, so we have next fifteen minutes left. Okay. Do you have any questions? Uh... Do you, you see any questions anywhere? Uh, or, you can no? just put your questions in the chat room. So, uh, if you okay. have any I, I would request everyone to any, anybody who has a question to put it into the chat room and we can, uh, Mike uh, can answer that. And we also, 
my 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 mike will always answer that i i have i have high respect for your uh, you know you are a data driven person and i have seen how you uh, measure everything and how you uh, provide uh, a basis for whatever you know it's very easy to just give examples it's just very easy to give advice but we back it up with data you back it up with so much of uh, so much of your experience and thank you mike for uh, for always being uh, sharing all your knowledge with everyone and i think these kind of conversations i would i would uh, like to have more with you on other platforms uh, also like we you and i are also doing some uh, series of our conversations recording and and other ways also uh, if anyone anyone have any question in the future or any um, uh, regarding this they can reach out to mike or me take a picture of this or, or or take your cell phone and connect with us on linkedin or write to me on sandeep at smbcapitalpartners.com you will find mike also there and uh, in my in our in our on our website but if you send it to me i can ensure that mike and or i answer your questions and and and, and if you want to you know uh, reach out to him as a advisor or as a coach then also it is possible you can uh, you can reach out to him directly or, or 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 me just mention that you watched this seminar so that he takes care of you much 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 better and and we uh, i i treat everybody the same okay <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I, I always know. look after people okay thank you thank you very much and uh, uh, i think uh, it is a great pleasure and i think uh, we will we will share this on our linkedin and uh, profiles also and anshu i would request you to uh, send the and share the recording yeah and share, share the, the recording, recording with us both of us and also utilize the pcc forum to couple of times post it again so that people who have sure, not joined sure. they can do that yeah. okay thank sure, you mike sure. and uh, it's a nice That's it. Uh, no, time no no questions no questions uh, we don't have questions. Thank you. Ah, okay. Bye.